This takes us into the Safari Convention on July 12, 2020. On July 12, 2020, he was given the title, the Safari Convention. His text was inserted as the 22nd Mahatma Metropolitan on November 14, 2020. This text is a special gift to our generation, a seasoned administrator, a humble and simple chief shepherd, a source of inspiration and encouragement to many. When you hear of his text name, a few Characters that comes to mind are disciplinary, punctuality, mission oriented, administrator, writer, critic, and the list goes on. In regard to the mission initiative and its complete functioning, this place has been the forerunner of the formation of the Vegan Activity Committee in various regions of the diocese of North America and Europe. The RSC is, is grateful to our metropolitan mission in bringing the lay individuals to the forefront through this form. Tilmini has played an important role in emphasizing the role of kids and resourcing people in this diocese. When Tilmini served the diocese as the diocese the lay ministry evolved on many friends. Tilmini was instrumental in translating the short service of Malayalam into English with the introduction of the English chant. Tilmini's care and absent for participation of children in worship took form through initiating the formation of older boys and common girls as being at the forefront of Tilmini's mission. This takes care for everyone the same. All are equal in the eyes of Jesus Christ. In a nutshell, this place is a man of integrity, and like John the Baptist, pointing not to yourself, but beyond the rest of our Lord Jesus Christ in his teachings and service. There is so much more we can say to this day. What a wonderful vision he is, but there are no words to describe the love we have for you. Also this year, this day is celebrating this golden jubilee year as its coronation. We are truly present to celebrate this very special year with our metropolitan. Your ministry is a gift to us. We pray to the Lord to strengthen you in your walk with the Lord. Thank you for being a sign and servant of the unity of the Muslim Church. Your grace. Your presence with us is very important to us. We value greatly of your strong leadership and offer our praise for strengthening your leadership and influence in this world. We continue to pray and wish that God does know you, your grace sufficient strength to be. Dearly beloved in Christ, after the instant, the 22nd part of our metropolitan, all the way from our motherland, for the first time in the United States of America and in the Long Star State of Texas. On behalf of our diocesan episcopal and of the Southwest RSC Committee and all that are gathered here with humility and love, I congratulate and give warm welcome to this day's most prevalent of the Eurasian Karmama. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Tilmini is the former president bishop of the Diocese of North America and Europe. He served on the episcopal to a number of dioceses prior to joining in North America and Europe diocese. He has over 30 years serving as the episcopal responsibilities. When he took charge in the USA, 
here at Mission and Mission about unprivileged children. Like Life is a project of the North America Mission Board of Diversity of North America and Europe that was launched in October 2017. Our Diversity is from the right government of Isaac of Elizabeth. Identified the need of supporting less privileged children who were deprived of their basic necessities of food and education in the remote villages in different parts of India, Mexico, as well as in the USA. The Light to Life program provides the members of the diocese with an opportunity to make a difference in the life of a child. This helps to support the educational and physical development of the children. Also help to provide quality-based education. Tiveni is committed to market spirituality and social service commitment. His vision for the next generation is to priority. By the grace of God and grace of many, that we should take to reality in 2018. Karme, Margot must center, Atlanta. Facility must purchase and must dedicate and inaugurated on December 29, 2018. We thank and praise God for your leadership and we continue to pray for God's guidance and agencies the days to come. On behalf of Southwest RAC, with humility and love, I welcome our Diocese Episcopa, the Right Honorable Doctor Isaac Mar Philipson. Dallas County, which includes the cities of 
Kapil, Parmesh Plants, Irving, Carrollton, Dallas and Addison. During the 86th legislative session, Representative Julie Johnson was appointed to the House Committee on Insurance and Judiciary and Civil Jurisprudence. When Representative Julie Johnson is my home domestic, she is an attorney that specializes in personal injury cases, family law, and mediation. Let us give our representative a warm welcome to this presentation program. Next, 
to submit it to our CPA. He was the former Joshua of North America and Europe Bio System from 2014 to 2020. Served as an Eleven of Southwest Region and member of the Bandama Trust of Trans Carbon Spans. I welcome Mr. Philip Thomas for this special program. Mr. Sean Thomas, Diocese Council Member of Youth Representative, he is the member of the Emmanuel Bandama Trust of Houston. I welcome Mr. Sean Thomas for this special program. I welcome Mr. Debbie Jones, Southwest Diocese Secretary, Mr. Isaac Thomas, Southwest Diocese, Trustee Finance, Mr. David Matthew, Southwest Diocese, Trustee Agonden, and Mr. Sh Mr. Shanti Damogun, the program coming of this presentation program. I welcome all the Soviet friends of Southwest Diocese. Our emphasis for this evening program is Colonel Dennis Abraham. As well as the regard of the hosting of the matches. Please welcome Ashley. Also, Mr. Sancho Thomas, member of the Mandama Church of Thomas Miller. Please welcome Mr. Asha. <laughs> Let me also welcome all our colleagues and families from all the parishes that all are gathered here today. Really, I mean, and all the members of the Mother Matters and Sister Parish. We are going to be all on behalf of Sambulas and RSA. Allow me this place to finish this welcome address with a sincere wish that you will visit here with me in value to all and be renewed and strengthened blessings. Once again, on behalf of Sambulas and RSA, warm welcome to everyone. Thank you. Reverend Dr. Isaac Arthur Tumas Episcopa has been serving as our Diocese Bishop since 2016. The ministry's leadership has been vital, especially during the time of the pandemic, where a new norm was set in the life, mission, ministry, and sacramental life of the Church, especially in the diaspora context. The ministry has been keen in devising and implementing various plans to transform the diocese into a model diocese of mission. The ministry's ecumenical leadership so profound and dynamic that the committee was elected in the past as a member of the Central Committee of the World Council of Churches, the President of the Senate of Sarenborg College, and Chairperson of the Ecumenical Christian Center. On behalf of all gathered here, we invite the committee for the presidential act.
the maiden visit to Lord of America at your diocese of the Vatava Church. It really was here for the last two weeks and he was receiving uh, yeah. reception as well as felicitation from our members of Canada and United States at different places. And each region uh, is organizing such programs. And last week we have a diocesan presentation program organizing in New York. And today I am very happy that some West region has taken this initiative in appreciating the topic of Hiduveni and having such a wonderful occasion for everyone to gather together and express our love and affection to the Metropolitan Hiduveni. As we know, he was here as the Lives of Bishop from 2009 to 2016 and he initiated various programs for the development of the parishes and for the progress of the church, especially relating the youth and the children to the church and empowering the lady for taking leadership in the church. And his vision was to have decentralization of the administration of the diocese as well as having more responsible positions taken by the regions and the regional activity committee was formed in different places. Of course, a new way of understanding the mission, reaching out to the people, to the native American mission, or neighbor politician, or Mexican mission, various programs organized, and he tried to improve at every moment and reaching out to the needs of the people. As we gathered together, he was a person who knows us and always we say that a leader who knows the way, shows the way and he was able to reach everyone and to make everyone feel that this church belongs to all. His commitment to Christ and to serve the Lord has been nearly Dedicated to his services for the last 50 years as an ordained priest of the Mahatma Church and for the last 20 years as the Episcopa and now for the last two years as the Metropolitan of the Mahatma Church. I was fortunate and sometimes I was a little bit fearful to follow him uh, the diocese where he is served. In general, my diocese, immediately after his uh, interior there, I succeeded him. And here also, immediately after him, I came here. And uh, it was not that comfortable to follow him at every time. He was, he was very uh, punctual, hardworking, and making things see, happen uh, overnight. But I am a person who is more calm and uh, see things through in a more see, casual way. But uh, we were together, and uh, whenever I say uh, these things in public or in private, I will say that each person who follows someone should add on and improve things, whatever is there. In that way, we were always coordinating in 
discussions and managing things and getting things implemented in a better way. So I very much thank God for his ministry and his service to the church and the church look forward his continued mission and commitment to carry on the church to the future. I pray that God may continue to bless everyone at every places as a diaspora community especially through his contacts and his advice, his guidance. Once again I appreciate the real activity committee of Southwest Region for organizing this program. Uh, Thomas Martin, the Vice President, uh, Mr. E.B. George, the Secretary, of course, E.B. John is here now this morning. Uh, he received a sad news from India where his mother in law asked him, but uh, he is leaving tomorrow back to India. So we express our condolence to E.B. at this time, the one family, and he was a hard working secretary of our uh, real life. Shaisen Powers, etc. And the convener of this program, Shaji Ramadan, he worked very hard to organize this. And all the members of the RSEC community, especially Powers Branch Church, the Vigar, Assistant Vigar, and the Assembly Committee members, for making all arrangements of this evening. We have a blessings for the to prayers, etc. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy, for the kind of encouraging words and addressing the congregation. Uh, this evening, we are blessed with the presence of our spiritual leaders and many dignitaries on the podium. We have two bishops who present in different churches amongst us who took time from their busy schedule to be here in first location. Right, Reverend Dr. George Sumner is the current bishop of the Dallas Diocese of the Episcopal Church and oversees 100 congregations. He has been serving as bishop for the past four years, seven years, and as a priest for more than four decades. He also served as principal of Whitefield College in Toronto, Canada, and also served in the ministry of the Native Americans in New Mexico and Arizona. We welcome Bishop Sumner to offer the felicitation. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, it is an honor for me to be with you this evening and an honor to meet His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Theodosius Metropolitan of the Maratoma Church, and to welcome him here to Dallas and to all of North Texas. A famous Anglican named John Wesley once said, the world is my parish, and for His Grace that is literally true. Families invariably have the marks or traits of their parents. And that's true of the Martoma Church. Your grandfather being the patron saint and missionary pioneer of Christianity in India. Thomas was someone who was honest with our Lord. He was faithful when he said, my Lord and my God at, um, before the risen Christ. He was willing to travel far for the gospel, to witness, and ultimately to suffer. As an apostle, he holds these qualities out to your church and to mine as well as a reminder and an encouragement. I am sure, Your Grace, that you bring these same qualities of integrity and faithfulness and energy and boldness in your apostolic ministry. And for these, we give thanks. We are grateful to be in communion with you and feel called to maintain by grace and to strengthen our bonds of friendship. His grace is really a missionary at times. And all missionaries need to take into account the folk ways of the people they meet and so, Your Grace, as you come to Dallas, know that the tribe you encounter have customs like football, brisket, and do 
with things big. I pray that your visit will be richly blessed. That your clergy will be encouraged and refreshed. And your people will have a lively sense of being part of a worldwide global fellowship. I want to close with a prayer. You know, we Anglicans love our Book of Common Prayer. But the truth is that some of the best parts will be borrowed from ancient churches like our told. This is part of the prayer to bless the mission. Father, we pray that Theodosius may continue to be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we with him may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Sumner. Thank you for your kind words and for reminding us of our patron saint, the Apostle St. Thomas, and the tradition and heritage which we are proud of upholding even up to this day. His Grace, for Timotheus Thomas, is the Metropolitan of the Cortium Diocese and Secretary of the Holy Episcopal Synod of the Jacobite Syrian Christian Church. Dirmini has been serving as Metropolitan of the Jacobite Church for the past more than three decades. Dirmini has had significant roles in the development of the present Jacobite Syrian Orthodox Church in India, especially in the outside dioceses, and has prominently worked towards the development of pastoral ministries in the diaspora context. We welcome Timotheus Dirmini Metropolitan to offer a felicitation. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be blessed. Your grace, most reverend Theodosius Marco Metropolitan, Right Reverend Isaac Mark Philexinos Episcopa, President of this meeting, Right Reverend Dr. George Sanna, all distinguished guests on the dais, all Reverend Presbyters, and all faithful members assembled here. I am very happy to participate in this meeting. We participate together in several meetings in Kerala. Last September 18th, we were attending and were speaking on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the or the Platinum Jubilee of Church of South India and some months back we were together at Christ Thomas from where in remembrance of KK Chandi Foundation a meeting was convened and we, we were speakers as Metropolitan of the Bakoma Church, 22nd Metropolitan. He is occupying the seat which was occupied by prominent metropolitans in the past. I have had occasion from Johan and Markoma Metropolitan owners, all the metropolitans to get to know and interact and uh, converse and also participate in several meetings. As we all know, we are living in a particular juncture of the uh, global situation. Our world is a globalized world. Mobility of the people is happening everywhere. We hear about the villages that are being orphaned in Kerala because of the younger generation moving out to America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and other European countries. 
we read about the lost tribes of Israel, the lost ten tribes of Israel in the Bible. At the time of our Lord Jesus Christ, ten tribes were lost. But even in the diaspora situation of the Jews, great personalities came and given uh, intellectual as well as uh, philosophical contribution to the Jewish faith. We hear about Philo, who lived as a contemporary of Jesus Christ. He lived in Alexandria and he gave a great contribution of synchronizing the Logos philosophy and the Taba of the Jewish uh, scriptures. That was a great contribution because that was being used by the fathers of the church immensely quoting him in order to explain who Jesus is. In the midst of the mobility that is happening in the 21st century, the globalized situation, churches are facing immense uh, challenges, especially from the secular ideologies. I don't need to explain to you what is happening in this country. But these challenges could be used as, a, as an opportunity to witness the message of the triune God, to serve God's church in these times as well as for the future generation. And so, sure, your grace, Metropolitan Theodosius Matoma is occupying a pivotal position and as the Matoma Metropolitan, he has great responsibility to, to look after the the diaspora as well as the uh, one church back in India. So, I want to wish all the best for the Metropolitan and may God bless him and guide him in all his mercy and kindness. And on behalf of the Jacobite Syrian Christian Church, and also on behalf of the Syrian Orthodox Church all over the world. I wish all the best for our Metropolitan and may God bless you, bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your warm wishes and words and reminiscing of our mission and mission as a spiritual community. Honorable Representative Julie Johnson was elected to the Texas House of Representatives in November of 2018. She represents House District 115 in Dallas County, which includes the cities of Opel, Cardinal Scratch, Irving, Carrollton, Dallas, and Addison. She's an attorney by profession, and her role is very instrumental among Asians and her minority communities. She's a strong advocate for our causes. We welcome Representative Johnson for offering the station. Thank you. Good evening. And thank you to our hosts and to our dear friend, Councilman Gigi Matthew for inviting me to this beautiful event as we celebrate Dr. Theodosius Martama Richard For those of you I haven't met, my name is Julie Johnson. I've been a state representative here in House District 115 since 2018. I'm an attorney, a business owner, a wife, and a mother of two sons. 
When I was invited to speak here tonight, I dove into the history of the Martoma faith across the world and here in the United States. I learned that your church was named after St. Thomas. I learned about his great achievements in India, and I learned of the fierce determination and perseverance of your followers here in America. Your congregation and its history have so much in common with the South Asian communities that I have had the honor to represent for the past four years in the Texas legislature. From humble beginnings, these individuals have come to Texas and grown our cities and schools and economy in amazing ways. Another truth about this community is that you all live your faith inside and outside of the church. I deeply admire the charitable contributions our Indian American constituents make and have been proud to partner with many of your professional, community-led, faith-based efforts to assist fellow Texans in need. <coughs> Whether it was combating the pandemic, providing health care services, or assisting efforts to feed the hungry, I can always count on your community to show up. I always want to recognize this congregation and its leadership for partnering with one of my favorite organizations in Dallas County, MetroQuest Services. I volunteer more of my time and talent and treasure there than almost anywhere, and I am always looking to put ways to boost their mission. MetroQuest Services, so many parents, children, and senior citizens, and is based right here in House District 115. Many places in Texas go without adequate help for similar folks in need, but because of so many people like you who do your part, we are able to lift up thousands of our neighbors every year. And for that, I thank you for your generosity and your service. I look forward to getting to know more of you better, and please reach out to my district office or Austin office if I can ever help you with a state or local matter. Before I go, please let me say that I hope you never that you hope you take your civic duty seriously and in another way vote this November. After your contributions, you deserve the best. Go vote to make sure you are represented by true servant leaders who share your values of compassion, education, and sacrifice. Thank you so much for such a wonderful Thank you, Honorable Julie Thompson, for your kind words and for reminding us of the importance of serving our local community. The Reverend Father Roger Daniel Corey Biscopa is presently serving as the vicar of the Dallas St. Paul's Mother Orthodox Church in Reno and also the president of the Kerala Ecumenical Christian Fellowship in Dallas. Achin was ordained as Corey Biscopa last year. We welcome Corey Biscopa Achin to offer a felicity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one true God. Your Excellency, Most Reverend Brother Pedrosius Mokomo Metropolitan, Your Grace, Right Reverend Dr. Isaac Mokomo Simons, Your Grace, Mokomo Motios, Your Grace, Bishop Dr. George Sumner, Honorable Yuri Johnson, All our distinguished guests, Respected Brother Clergy, and my dear colleagues and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ. It is with immense joy and gratitude to God Almighty that I stand here today on behalf of the Kerala Ecumenical Christian Fellowship of Dallas to welcome Your Excellency, the most Reverend Dr. the Theodosius Matoma Metropolitan. My dear excess to me is great accomplishments <coughs> and reputation precedes him. And he is well known in the Christian world for his great charity work and his extensive role in ecumenical relations. He really has worked extensively for my social leaders that help those who are groundtrodden and less fortunate than us. He has tirelessly defended the, those who are often forgotten and built up the church in underdeveloped regions of India. For the meaning, being a Christian means to renew our faith in serving those who need us the most. 
His place has also done great work in the accumulating world. Trimani has used his authority to bring the Christian faith together to fight for those who are often forgotten about by the worst of the world. He is an example of Christian love and care for all people. We are so blessed to have this technical leader and social justice warrior in our midst. All the Christian churches in North America are blessed to have you with us here now. We ask that you continue to pray for us and lead us in our Christian mission for many years to come. Once again, on behalf of all 22 churches of the last Kerala Technical Christian Fellowship, we welcome and thank you for your days, the most of Dr. Fabius Matra Mahantrapati, for blessing us with your presence and praise. May Lord bless us all. Thank you. Thank you very much for your participation prayers and your presence here. Now the choir will be leading us in a song, In Christ the Lord. Mm -hmm.
Thank you, choir. And thank you for offering us this song, which reminds us of the need to live a Christ centered life. Mr. Vijay Matthew is a pro tem mayor and council member, place six, city of Copal, Texas. He's a member of the Mormon Church of Dallas Farmers Branch. Vijay is an information technology IT professional with more than 20 years of experience in the IT field, including management. He's focused much on the development of the city and also the need to give back to the community. Yesterday, a special ceremony through proclamation in the city of Coppell. October 11, 2022 was marked as the day in honor of Bishop Dr. Kudoshis Martima Metropolitan Day. We welcome Bidu to offer a felicitation at this time. Thank you very much. Respected theologians, Markum uh, Metropolitan, Felix Kasirimani, Timon Kasirimani, Bishop Lord Summer, clergy, elected officials, and, and dear friends in Christ. Thank you very much for this opportunity to say a few words about Metropolitan. As you mentioned, yesterday I had the honor to deliver the proclamation from the city of Lapel, naming Bishop Dr. Kiroshis Makoma Day, city of Lapel. <laughs> Today I have the honor to deliver a special letter from the United States of Congress. Congress and our BC of Mississippi from Texas. Respect to the time, I am not going to read the entire letter, I will just read the sentence. United States Congress, RBC, Member of Congress, October 12, 2022. Dear Welcome to my Metropolitan, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate most Reverend Dr. Theodosius Malakoba Metropolitan, who is the 22nd Maravilla Metropolitan to occupy the holy apostolic form of St. Louis. Bishop serves estimated about 1.6 million people across the globe, many of whom reside in the congressional district 33 and the surrounding communities. As a United States Congressman of Texas District 33, I'm proud to offer my best wishes to you and all the celebration of Dr. Theodosius Malakoma Day, Mark B.C. Member of Congress. <laughs> As I mentioned yesterday, Tirmini was present. Tirmini is a dynamic leader, both spiritually and administrative. My wife, my wife was very excited to hear Tirmini took the, took the leadership role and support to modify the language to admit ladies to assist the priests and bishops at the altar. So all the ladies sitting here, isn't that a great news? Yeah. I request all of you to pray for him as lead our church. The leaders we always get complaints and compliments. I know that I don't get that day. So I ask you to pray for the remain. The remain is not the cause of the evil of the evil. But the cause of the evil of the evil of the evil. They will have to be prepared for the evil of 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 the evil. May God bless you. May God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Here at the Politan, 
welcome us here, many respected bishops and adjuncts, uh, Mayor Burton Biju Matthew, uh, distinguished guests, and uh, honorable uh, guests, program convener, and the Southwest Regional Committee, and brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank God for this opportunity to stand before you today to welcome our Metropolitan Bishop to the Southwest Regional event. My first meeting with Metropolitan, who was an usher at the time, was when I was nine years old in September 1980 in Toronto, Canada, when he participated in a funeral of one of our dear family members who lost her battle with cancer. Fast forward 40 plus years later, and it is a great honor to meet you again as His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Theodosius Martha Lum Metropolitan. Many of you may be unaware that our Metropolitan was a key pioneer in advocating and advancing women in ministry opportunities dating back to January 2015 at Mount Carmel Marcola Church in Hudson, Massachusetts. So it is only befitting that I thank him for his leadership in the most recent decision by the Marcola Church to formally approve women, lay leaders, to serve during Holy Communion services. While some of you may think that this was due to female empowerment or women's rights, I believe our Metropolitan sees a wonderful opportunity for women to participate in services that they have never been able to do before. Uh, Margaret Thatcher, who I'm sometimes compared to uh, as the Iron Lady in our Sunday School, uh, was the former Prime Minister of the UK, and she once said, you have to you have got to do the right thing, even if it is painful. Don't trim or track over all over the place. Set your course and take the difficult decisions, because that is what needs to be done. Metropolitan, we appreciate you being a huge supporter of the young women of the Markham Church and helping this women in ministry milestone to finally become a reality. As a mother of two daughters, I understand the importance of this, this decision for the next generation. Our parents religiously brought us to church for Sunday school and youth activities, but now there are even additional ways to serve during worship services for our children. I, for one, am truly grateful for this decision and the foresight by our church leadership in moving the needle forward. I hope that our young men and women continue to be trailblazers trailblazers in our diocese, our region, and our parishes. They can dream and do more than the previous generations that have gone before us. In 2022, I am humbled to say that the Markham Church has embraced a progressive approach for women in ministry, and advancement of this is the responsibility of all church members and all clergy. None of us should take our role lightly in this responsibility. In my race for a city council seat in 2017, I saw the intense opposition for a woman, especially a South Asian, or specifically an Indian woman, to be included. In a four-person race, I lost by five votes in the primary election and two votes in the runoff. Did I give up? No, I didn't. With the help of my incredible family and friends, and the support of an entire community of voters. Not one, but two minority women have sat at the council dais since 2019. Today, I am extremely happy to say that our city of 21,000 residents has four of seven positions filled by women council members. And to top it off this year, I became the first minority woman mayor pro tem for the city. Praise God, because with Him, all things are possible. My final words are a quote from a U.S. First Lady who made her own mark in history. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, the good leader inspires people to have confidence in the leader. A great leader inspires people to have confidence in themselves. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart, Metropolitan, for being a great leader and for your presence here today. I pray that your vision for the future of the Markhamma Church is a very bright one and we continue to follow the motto, light it to light it. Thank you.
the commissioner of nine words. Dr. Ann Matthew Coons is the president of the Stanley Jones Foundation and is the granddaughter of the lady Stanley Jones, who is a friend of the Mandara Marvin Assyrian Church and the Beyond Marvin Convention speaker. She is an author, missionary, and global teacher evangelist. And is Dr. Ann is a psychologist by profession who worked for 20 years with the Federal Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration and served as the deputy director for the Center for Mental Health Services until June 2021. She received her doctorate in counseling and consulting psychology from Harvard University and has worked with the state and federal mental health agencies for many years in programs designed to prevent school violence and suicide, promote mental health and prevent mental and behavioral disorders, treat child trauma, and support disaster preparedness and response. She is also involved in engaging faith communities in suicide prevention. On behalf of all, I welcome Dr. Ann to offer a short presentation. Thank you. Um, I'm honored to be here this transparent and sincere. He is a powerful advocate of change that we've just heard and enjoys experimenting with options to see what best meets human needs and kingdom values. He assumed his new responsibilities in a time of many challenges, not the least of which was the worldwide COVID pandemic. It is clear that his leadership, steady hand of guidance and love surely enabled him to provide the needful for his church and parishioners. I wish now to offer gratitude for your leadership and involvement in the following areas. And these are just a sampling of your grace's wide and deep engagement in our work. Your grace cares deeply about God's world and is a steward of God's creation. You plant trees and flowers and raise vegetable gardens wherever possible. The possibilities of seeds are wonderful because they are timeless, and I have some packets of seeds for you to take home. <laughs> you are expansive in your ministry and have, for example, supported efforts among African Americans in the United States with a particular focus on youth. We all know that youth is our future. You understand the importance of health, holistic health, body, spirit, and mind, that you do not neglect the needs of persons with mental health challenges. You continue to pursue the growth of faith, faith communities, and I understand that you were instrumental in the development of the English Crossway Martin Church in Dallas. You are surely committed to work-life balance. I saw a smiling photo of you with a big fish on the wonderful YouTube video narrated by Dr. Matthew T. Thomas. Fishing, by the way, was something that East Stanley Jones enjoyed doing immensely as he worked to support his own work-life balance. As a representative of the East Stanley Jones Foundation, I want to offer His Grace and the Martoma Church our full support of your denominational initiatives and our willingness to collaborate on projects of mutual interest, such as evangelism, holistic health, with a special emphasis on mental health and suicide prevention, and last, since you are a prolific author, I offer the publishing arm of the East Daly Jones Foundation for your consideration. Continued blessings on your gracious ministry and the Martoma Church. Your Grace, Right Reverend 
Jawab sangat terbeli. Bila dia jalan ke macam, korang bisco pos macam, distinguish guest on the dice and off the dice. Respect the actions, brothers and sisters in Christ, youth and children. Let us thank God for this blessed and anointed day. As Nidanta Vanya Divya Mahima Sri, Dr. Tredoshe Smartoma, the 22nd Metropolitan of the Manandira Matoma Syrian Church is with us today. The year 2022 is significant in Metropolitan's ministry as this place has completed 50 years of ordained ministry in June of this year. As Asha Thomas mentioned, I had the honor and privilege of serving Tirumeni in the position of diocesan treasurer while Tirumeni was the diocesan episcopa of this diocese. Tirumeni is a dynamic personality with vision and zeal to serve the Lord and the church. A keen observer, very disciplined, <coughs> optimistic, Accountable, transparent, and sincere. In each of the dioceses, Tirmeni is served. Tirmeni initiated projects with the poor and the needy in mind and helped to provide voice to the voiceless. Tirmeni started many new projects in this diocese to enhance. Youth participation, they may revise the English, English worship liturgy and worship order for special occasions. Increase the number of English worship services in our parishes. And also started even an English congregation in Dallas, which is now known as Crossway Matoma Church in Dallas. We thank also our dear beloved Felix in Australia in starting another English congregation for the youth of this diocese, which is called the Redeemer Church in New Jersey. Tirmeni started the altar boys and covenant girls programs for grooming the younger generation to serve the church. For the youth, Tirmeni started the neighborhood mission project and expanded the Native American mission field activities to improve the living conditions of the residents in Colonia Matoma mission field in Mexico. Tirmeni built kitchen and toilet facilities for each house and installed water storage facility and electricity for each of the residents there. The remaining started the Manna project to provide nutritious food to the residents of that community to alleviate the malnutrition and poverty of those residents. The remaining concentrated the chapel in Mexico Tirmeni translated our worship liturgy to Spanish and it was well liked by many bishops in the World Council of Churches when uh, our uh, late Metropolitan Joseph Mantoma Metropolitan came here. Tirmeni was asking, how did you all do that? It was really done by one of my co-worker professors in my college. She spent 36 hours to do it. But the residents in are using that at least once a month now in our services in Mexico Mission Field. To decentralize the operations of the diocese and to strengthen the regions of the diocese, Tirmeni introduced the concept of Regional Activity Committee, we call it RAC.
Stop the very move to Mumbai diocese. Then we are set up RSCs in the southwest, southeast, and northeast regions. That's in Texas, in Philadelphia, and in New York. Then we set those things as non profit corporations exempt from federal income tax under the Internal Revenue Code. We have the fourth RIC right now in uh, Mexico. Our beloved Felix in Australia set that up in January of 2020. The Mary started the Young Families Fellowship and the IT Fellowship to attract U.S. citizens to the ministry. The Mary started and set up 403B Pension Plan, Vacation Plan, and Employer Contribution of Social Security Taxes for those U.S. citizen actions. The Romania also started the Higher Study Scholarship Fund in, 19, in 2016. Three of our attorneys received their master's degree and one of our attorneys is pursuing the master's degree in Atlanta University right now. The Adoptions the Romania always found time to interact with the youth of this diocese whenever Tirmeni visit the parishes. Tirmeni listen to their needs and to their concerns. I remember Tirmeni sitting on the floor of the stairs to take a picture with the youth after the youth meeting. I, had, I was also sitting on the floor at that time. And the youth of this diocese used to call Tirmeni Mam Tio. I don't know whether they can call now you know, like that. But, uh, they love the remaining. In fact, one of the youth was coming to me and said, the remaining look tired in the airport. I said, it's because of the long journey. Don't worry. So, the Russian remaining is an advocate of change and has no fear of experimenting with new initiatives. If such change is in power with God's kingdom values. For the first time, we have our annual report and our accounts published in English two months ago. For the first time, two new organizations, the Sabha's Development Department and the Senior Citizen Fellowship, were recognized as official organizations of Mahatma Church. Now, women can serve in the Madhubha. So, change is on the way. Theodosius Trimeni understands that the challenge of the Madhubha Church in the 21st century is to assume its global nature by transcending the boundaries set by the familiar religion and culture. We pray that God will grant the remaining the vision and grace to emulate the seven leadership of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in shepherding the church. Let me conclude with the words of Apostle Paul, the architect and builder of the church. In his first letter to Corinthians, chapter 15, Paul tells us this. Stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Brothers and sisters, what is our responsibility now? We need to keep and uphold that our dear metropolitan Trimeni in our daily prayers. May God bless all of us. Thank you, Professor Philip Thomas. Mr. Sean Burbies is a diocesan council member from this region and also serving.
the Diocese of Youth Fellowship and Regional Youth Fellowship. He is from the Houston Trinity in one church and a second generation youth in this diocese. He, by profession, he is an auditor and a fraud investigator for Harris County, Texas. He is actively part of the life, mission, and ministry of the church along with our diocese. I welcome, on behalf of all, I welcome Sean Burgess to offer a felicitation at this time. Good evening. What a blessing it is to be here today. Thankful to God, everything has gone so smooth, smoothly so far for our facil felicitation meeting here again today. Respecting His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Theodosius Rutherford Metropolitan, our Diocese President, Right Reverend Dr. Isaac Mark Flexos Episcopa, all other distinguished guests, our chiefs and families, and my fellow participants here at the, this, this evening's program as well as watching online. It is an honor and privilege to have been asked by Thomas Matthew Yeshua, the program coordinator, Mr. Charlie Garmin-Groom, and the Southwest RIC office bearers to speak on behalf of the Southwest RIC and Diocese Council as the final felicitator of this evening. That means the faster I finish, the closer we are to eating dinner this evening. They say everything is bigger in Texas including the number of questions here for today's program, since it is part of this year's clergy conference. I believe this is the sixth or seventh visitation program for the many in our diocese, so I'm not sure what else is left to be said, but I will try. First of all, congratulations to the many for completing 50 years in the Lord's priestly ministry. I remember assisting with the many at least once in 2011 during the completion of our church remodeling and visiting our Mexico mission, Colonia, with their many in 2015 to celebrate the birthday of our previous Metropolitan, Joseph Martin. The Rios of their many embodies the Reformation spirit of the Martin Church. Under his leadership as our diocesan episcopal, but their many took an interest in developing a new English service liturgy that is now used globally to help create a meaningful worship experience for those in the larger Indian community outside of Kerala for whom Malayalam is not their first language. The liturgy has been translated for various sacramental and other special services, including weddings, baptisms, funerals, and hospitals. The Malayalam chants were also translated to incorporate more, more music for English communion service. Theodos Dimmery encouraged the parishes to regularly have more English Holy Quran and English Divine Services to better serve the second and now third generations of this diocese. He is actively pushed to broader representation within the parish, office bearers, and executive committee as a whole unit to better meet and understand the needs of our parish. There it is emphasize the importance of speaking English during committee meetings, announcements, and special services like Christmas, Easter, First Communion, and Parish Day to have greater participation of these, these programs and the services. They really established the altar boys and covenant door classes, along with the lead classes, have encouraged people to increase their knowledge of the different parts of our worship service and the history of the church. Their many passion for mission work is a testament to his calling as a faithful servant of Christ. Their many's neighborhood mission initiative has resulted in the greater involvement of parishes as a whole and their respective organizations to identify areas in their local communities to carry out the call of Jesus gave us in Matthew chapter 12, verses 30, 31. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The various medical training cabinets, food supply drives, blood drives, tax prep work, workshops, post-storm disaster relief, and other mission activities have allowed people scattered in this diocese to use their time, talents, and resources to go out into the neighborhood and serve as the hands and feet of Christ and put the phrase, every market is a missionary into action. The Notice of was an active supporter of the two primary missions of the Southwest region, the Native American Mission in Oklahoma and the Mexico Mission. 
Prior to COVID, both mission sites were able to conduct regular BBS medical trips, Christmas visits, and public community services that were supported by both the older and younger generation of this diocese. During the Emeritus final years our resident bishop, he was able to translate from liturgy into Spanish, and this service is still used by our archivists when they visit Mexico. As the 22nd Metropolitan of Martha Metropolitan of our church, Theodosius Martha Newman has the responsibility of guiding and leading our church as it faces new challenges in the world, in a world that is sadly, sadly moving away from God and biblical truth. It is my prayer that Theodosius Newman is able to continue encouraging now the larger group of the Martha community to be engaged in mission activities, participate in worship services and other church events, and continue to grow in their knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we await the second coming. If that does not happen before me, we also await the next second coming to America, this time to the parents of Houston, as they are hoping to see you during this season. Before I officially conclude, I would also like to offer my wishes to Flexo Stirling, who is entering his 38th year as a bishop of our church. May God continue to equip and use you to serve the needs of his church. After Christo Stirling passed away last year, my sensible students asked me, why would we not see a great metropolitan anymore in service? God willing, the ocean theory, that will be your uh, next chapter in a few years, and this is what I was going to say earlier, he would call you to become the uh, metropolitan. Thank you for everyone for your time, and God bless you. Thank you, Sean, for your kind and powerful words. In recognition of the metropolitan's 50 years of priesthood, the Southwest RIC President, Reverend Dr. Isaac Moore Phillips, who will be presenting a panora. Panora is a clove in the Indian culture which is used to adorn and mark special occasions and to honor dignities. Thank you. 
This grace, the most reverend Dr. Hiroshi Smotama Metropolitan, is the 22nd Martama Metropolitan of the Lamakara Martama Syrian Church. He may serve as our diocesan bishop from 2009 to 2016. The man is known for his theological contributions, meticulous leadership, and shepherding the church during this pandemic. The man is thoughtful, hardworking, efficient, optimistic, disciplined, observant, systematic, innovative, understanding, and a spiritual leader of our church. And we are proud to call the many as our metropolitan. The first, under the living's leadership, we find the Mormon Church published the Sabbatarika in English for the first time for the benefit of the global Martama community. Under Dominion's leadership, the Martama Church officially formed two new organizations in the recent Mandala. One, the Senior Citizens Fellowship, and number two, the Development Department. Metropolitan Dominion is on an apostolic visit to the diocese of North America and Europe after becoming the Martama Metropolitan and occupying the throne of the Apostle See of Palangara. Also, it is noteworthy to mention that Thirumini's hard work and initiative enabled the RIC to form, and we thank Thirumini for accepting our invitation and for joining us here today. We now invite Metropolitan Thirumini to bless us with the reply message. Care 
and kindness. I express my thanks to the Regional Activity Committee for taking the initiative in organizing this meeting over here and for the Diocesan Episcopal Advisor Mr. Ferguson of Sri for giving all leadership and enabling everyone to come together and organize this meeting. This is also an occasion where I remember the gratitude. The lead that our Diocesan Episcopal of Christ my Mafiris was the many is giving in forming more regional activities, activity committees. For I see a new one that is formed in Canada. And I think there will be other area as well. And I congratulate the many and all the members of this diocese for purchasing the Carmel Center at Atlanta, which I have the rather prior privilege of receiving this time. I will say that it's a good buy and there are lots of things to do, and that will in the long run prove that the diocese is taking a lead to have more and more activities here in this land of the United States of America. I am thankful to Felix Nostelmeni for starting the Light to Life project where so many children are enrolled now from various states of India. Today, the Red Trustee of the Church was expected to come and participate in this meeting. Because of some sickness, he was not able to come, but I represent him as a, in not only bringing the greetings, but also expressing the gratitude for all the cooperation that is given by various parishes and various organizations in this region. Church is the family of families. It's not simply a set of clergy, it's not simply a set of lady. It's a family of families where we see all children, youth, Others and uh, senior members. It is very important that we give importance to our children. A few are here, but more are there in this area. We need to spend time with them. That is very, very important. We need to speak to them. We need to encourage them to open up and sleep. These are very, very important as well as a family is concerned. And church being the family of families, I want to underline that it is very important that we bring our children to the church, to the Sunday school, and all the activities of the church. For well, they are the future of the church. And we shouldn't forget that. Things won't happen automatically. Things have to be done step by step. And therefore, Dear parents and young adults, I request all of you to spend more time with the children and also to see that they are brought to the church and also enable them to participate in the various activities we have together. It's already mentioned over here that the church is recognized as a senior fellowship of the church as a recognized organization. And therefore, I want to very emphatically say that the Church is valuing the leadership and experience of all the senior members of the Church. Whether you are here or elsewhere, all the senior members of the Church are to be 
this days that when seniors come to the church for worship or for other activities, the younger ones take no lead in seeing that they are taken care of. They are looked after and whatever help and assistance that they need, those things are given to them on time and in place. Young families, it is very important that we keep the integrity of the family, keep the members together, understand that the relationship which God has given to us is very, very important, that is to be kept and that is to be considered as sacred, and is to be understood that life has its truth in the little relationship which we have in our families and which God has given to us for us to experience and also to nourish. Many things were said over here about a young members of the church. There were days when we used to say that the youth are the future of the church. No, no, no longer. They are the strength of the day, today. They have dreams. All of us have our dreams. But they have greater dreams. They have new dreams. A dreams which we may not be able to understand. But they understand because they live more closer to the time and space. And those dreams has to flower. It has to find its place in the community. And therefore, all the resources that we have in the youth of the church are to be mobilized, are to be used. They are to be given space and they are to be given privileges to solve the responsibilities. I see that transition is taking place in our parishes over here. But then I am also reminded of the fact that we have only less than one third of our youth in the parishes in our region and in our diocese. What is happening to the two third? We very much need to put our attention to see that they are brought together. They are not to be kept away. They have to be brought together. They should feel at home and at the same time they should acknowledge that the resources that they have, talents they have, all these talents are for the growth of the church, for the mission and ministry of the church, and that is to be done. I am happy that we have a full English congregations like the Crossway over here and Redeemer in uh, New Jersey. But even there, I see that they are more or less confined to the membership that they have. Taking for example the Texas region, there are lots and lots of our young people not yet coming to any other parishes over here. Are we not able to go out and meet them wherever they are? Wherever they are? And then you give them fellowship and enable them to understand that there is a home where they can come. A home where they have a role. A home where they have certain things to be done. That seeking and bringing people together and finding that we bind them all together in Christian love is a ministry that is to be carried out urgently. And I believe that will be done pretty soon. I am happy that we have Bishop Dr. Charles Summa with us today. And I am reminded that I was a student of the Free College for one year. Many, many people there do not know that I was a student over there. I was a student at McMaster. And towards the end of my studies in my master, I spent one year in Wycliffe and I wanted to do so because so many of our 
culturally and research. They have studied in the British College. I am also happy that we have representatives from the state. We have uh, Biju Matthew and Mrs. Elizabeth Abraham. I am proud of them because they both belong to the Mahatma Church. Both they, one belonging to the Dallas Partners Branch and the other one to Sahiyan Mahatma Church. And at the same time, they are bridging the church to the state. Enabling the parishes over here to understand that what the state is doing, what the county is doing, what the city is doing. And I want to promise both of you that Mahatma Church is a church that reaches out to people who are in need. And that's exactly the ministry that we are carrying out. And therefore you can bang on all the members of the Mahatma parishes over here. You carry out the ministry when you reach out to the people who are in need, feeding the hungry, educating the children, taking care of the health care, and the like. I am happy that uh, all our parishes, particularly parishes in Texas, are now interested in mission activities, and that's why Dr. Grand Matthew will be interested to know that our Members are not only really interested in reaching out to the neighborhood, they are reaching out to far away places like Mexico, and they are also doing in evangelistic work in Africa, uh, in India. And this is the nature of the church, and therefore I am pretty sure whether it is in uh, America, Canada, or elsewhere, the Mahatmas will be carrying out that evangelistic mission is God has given to us. And reaching out, we not only really care for the people, the care is uh, evident in uh, saying that we give land and house for the people in Mexico. Even when uh, the initial stage was wiped off by the uh, tides, we were able to purchase another plot of land in the mainland and then construct our houses over there. Bring them together for vocational training. Bring them for their nutritious needs. And also to see that they can gather together as a community for their community gathering and also for worship. So when we said that we are engaged in mission, we are engaged in the life of the people, we are engaged in the life of the community, and that makes the ministry of this church a special one. I can see all the clergy of our diocese the center over here today, and I want to say that all the things that you speak about the church are carried out together, together. The, clerk, the, the bishops, the clergy, the lady, every, everyone together, we are carrying out the ministry of the church. And each clergy has got uh, his role in uh, playing in the respective places where you are posted now. And I told you this evening that you have a unique mission and ministry which God has given to you. And that is to be carried out. And once you carry that out in the, in the best interest, certainly the church will have more life and dynamism. This is exactly what we want to see in the parishes over here. And in speaking about the ecumenical relationship that we have, we have an ecumenical relationship with the various churches either in sharing the traditions and our tradition or in having a communal relationship. Now, we got General Chaya Thomas Indonesia, who was a former director of the Ecumenical District Center of Whitefield, Bangalore, and that Ecumenical Center was telling the whole world that we should be engaged in wider ecumenism, reaching out to wider areas where we shouldn't have strangers or enemies. Everyone should be brothers and sisters in the kingdom of God. And the new 
dimension to which we are all engaged is the love to the nature, the nature which God has created. COVID-19 has enabled us to learn the lessons that we should be caring to the other health. And that relationship and that care are to be done in order to see that the generations that follow us, generations who live us and they will have, they will have a safer place to stay in the hemisphere where God has uh, sent all of us. I thank everyone for your prayers. I thank everyone for your good wishes. I thank everyone for your fellowship. And I pray that God will continue to bless you over here. As I once again bring you greetings to the entire church, I seek your prayers and support for the mission and ministry of the church in the days to come. Thank you once again for all the words of felicitation, for your presence over here, and for the fellowship in which you participate. May God's name be honored and we be blessed. God's name be blessed all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Grace, and the Covenant to me for your kind words and highlighting all the spiritual achievements in our diocese. Also, uh, reminding us and guiding us how, as a spiritual and academic community, we can carry the torch forward that our forefathers have uh, shown us. We are very humble. Uh, next, uh, we have only a couple more programs left, and uh, what will be served after, after that? Now we will have board of points. Mr. Eddie George is Secretary of the Southwest RAC. He's an active member of the Matuba Church in Dallas Farmers Branch. He has been working very hard in organizing this event. We welcome Mr. Eddie for the board of points. His grace, most right, Reverend Dr. Tedocious Quantum Metropolitan. Right, Reverend Dr. Isaac Martin, it's most of Scopa. Right, Reverend Dr. Todd Summer. Reverend Father Roger Daniel Kurikuskova, Very Reverend Dr. Terian Thomas, Dr. Land and Eunice, Vigil Matthew Deputy Mayor Proton of Cobalt City, Elizabeth Matthew Deputy Mayor Proton of Murphy City, other dignitaries on stage, Tulatis, and my dear brothers and sisters of Christ. It is indeed a great honor to welcome and felicitate our 22nd March of Metropolitan. It is my privilege to serve as a secretary of the Southwest RAC Regional Activity Committee, which was one of Trinity's mission. It was during his tenure as Diocesan Bishop of North America and Europe, the Regional Activity Committees started to form across North America. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Trinity on celebrating 50 years of priesthood and pray that God gave him wisdom to lead the Martoma Church in the years to come. <laughs> On behalf of Southwest RAC, we thank you, Tirimeni, for the time out of your busy schedule to attend this program. <laughs> Our Diocesan Episcopal Bishop Mike Robert Dr. Isaac Martinez, Most Episcopal. Tirimeni is a true leader. This program was made successful through Tirmini's guidance at every step. We thank you, Tirmini, for presiding on this meeting. I would like to congratulate Tirmini as he celebrates 30 years of history. Our sincere gratitude on behalf of Southwest RSC. Thank you for your kind words and condolences. Right Reverend Dr. George Sun, Bishop Episcopal Classes of Dallas, we thank you for accepting our invitation and attending this program. <laughs> right. Honorable uh, Reverend Father Roger Daniel Moore Episcopal, KECF Dallas President, who is very active in the community activities in the area. Thank you for joining us in the presentation program. I would also like to take the opportunity to thank my Reverend Mark Timotheus Thomas, Metropolitan Jacobite Syrian Church, Christian Church of Fort Ambassadors, and Honorable Reverend Julie Johnson for taking the time and, and accepting our invitation and, and attending this program. Very Reverend Dr. Terian Thomas, who is a dynamic leader and always willing to do
Thank you, Ajit, for your service and attending today's program. Did you Matthew, Elizabeth Abraham, much of our church members in the region, we are happy with your presence and proud that you are active in the community. Dr. Anne Matthew Eunice, President Stanley Coates Foundation, we thank you for accepting our invitation and attending this program. Reverend Todd Abraham, Diocesan Secretary, he always is there to provide his support and guidance for the programs and activities of the Regional Activity Committee. Thank you, Ajit. Mr. Philip Thomas, CPA, who is a former Diocesan Treasurer, always ready to help with any activities of the Diocese. On behalf of the South West Diocese, I would like to express my gratitude. Mr. Sean Murphy, Diocesan Council Member and South West RAC Committee Member, he is he's also available with activities for region and diocese. He is very active in the videos. Thank you, Sean. We would also like to thank Sahi George, Mayor of Sunnyville, who is also the member of St. Paul's Martin Church, and Roger Jacob Sabah Trustee, who accepted our invitation but couldn't be here between us. Mr. Sadi Rahul, the program convener, who worked tirelessly day and night to make all the arrangements for this program. There are no words to express gratitude. We thank you, Mr. Shadi, for your service to the Southwest RIC and the Diocese and the South. Our Southwest RIC officers, I say Thomas, Jillian Matthew, led by Vice President Reverend Thomas Matthew, met up to plan for this program. Thank you. I would like to thank the clergy in the region. There are several committees that were formed under their leadership to make this program possible. Reverend Dr. Ethan Burgess, Convener Finance Committee, Subcommittee Members, Sabu Chirigan, Philip Thomas, Sean Burgess. Ms. Reverend, Tom, Reverend Abraham Thomas, Reverend Abraham Brewer, Reverend Toby John, were led the choir. The choir practiced tirelessly, and I would like to thank every choir member who practiced and sang today. We are excited to see George for leading the food committee. The subcommittee members were Tommy Johnson and Jimmy Matthew. Reverend Abraham Kuru led the usher committee. Subcommittee members P.G. Matthew. Reverend Alex White, who is the leader of the host parish, in spite of his busy schedule, led, he led the reception committee for this program. Thank you, Ajay. The subcommittee members were Isho Malikul and Mrs. Srila Maise. I would also like to thank Philip Thomas, who we call Tommy with love, who helped with arrangements on and off the stage. We today have various congregate members from media, Asia Net, Parallel TV, Pravasi Channel, DSMC, who is helping stream the program live and the photographers. Dallas White Nicola Taylor, professional gender group, who performed traditional males. Members of the group collaborated with MPC and the Union Second. We thank you for, the, for their time. I would like to thank the ABO team, Christy Nyman, Anika John, Ronnie Abraham, and the team who helped behind the scenes for the sun. I would like to thank the sponsors, the churches in the region who helped financially for this program. I would like to mention each of them, but due to the lack of time, I would like to express my gratitude on behalf of Southwest RSC. On behalf of Southwest RSC, I would also like to thank the Martha Church of Dallas Thomas French Committee for letting us use this beautiful facility. The MCs of the program are Reverend Dennis Abraham and Marshall Thomas. Thank you for helping conduct the program smoothly. Last but not the least, it is all of you who took the time to attend the program on a weekday. I would like to especially thank the clergy and the families from all over who attended this program from all over the U.S. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Abhi George. In any word of thanks, the person who delivers the word of thanks does not thank him or herself. So let's give a round of applause to Abhi George for the hard work.
Today is also a day of celebrating milestones. His Grace the Marduma Metropolitan is celebrating 50 years of priesthood. Our Diocese Bishop, Marfilosinos Episcopa, is celebrating the 30th year of Episcopacy. The RSC is proud to mark this occasion through the cutting of the cake and at the same time our choir will be offering this.
This can be also play for our beach, southwest region, committee, and all its office members, and all its member parishes, for all that before, all the wonderful things to have been doing to all of us. We thank you for all of us and you guys so well. Thank you for their dedicated leadership, continuing to bless us. We thank you for our beloved Bishop from our sister at Chattels. Our Lord, thank you for the wonderful time of love and fellowship to have been doing us a lot. We summon all of us to have a day here. And we also pray for all our dear ones who are participating through online media. Lord, thank you for being with us. Thank you for the wonderful time we have been sharing together. At this time, we also pray for the fellowship here. We are going to have our Lord of the loving hands who have prepared the food and who stand for it. We pray for all those who are praying for us, all those who are supporting us. For the Lord, bless each one of us, each one of the Lord here, and help us never to forget that you are with us always. For the Lord, make healthy for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask and pray. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each one of us, now and always. Amen. On behalf of the Southwest Mission Activity Committee, we would like to thank all of you for participating in the public reception of this city. His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Mark, the Lord of the Metropolitan. We have dinner offered for everyone who has gathered here. Thank you.